Have you ever considered ditching the electric utility and using the sun to power your home? It sounds awesome, right? But then the question hits, how much does the solar panel thing cost? Is it more expensive in 2024 or are we seeing a trend for cheaper solar? Hi, I'm Sinue. Typically, I'd say this video is brought to you by DroneQuote, but forget that for a moment. Today's sponsor is Uncle Sam. It turns out he gave me the cheat code to life and he can give it to you as well. I got free travel, paid for college, and a VA house loan with just about pocket change for a down payment. I even got cush jobs thanks to my veteran status. So if you're looking for life hacks, check out the military. Booyah kusha. Now let's get back to it. Solar panels used to cost an arm and a leg, but that was 15 years ago. They've since come down in price, but you know what has gone up? Electricity. As of the second half of 2023, the average cost of solar panels was 280 per watt. This marks the lowest price point since mid 2020. However, depending on the size and brand of your system components and the scope of work, your pricing may vary. A significant cost that sometimes catches people off guard is roof work to replace an end of life roof. Other cost factors include tree trimming, electrical upgrades, or the cost to install solar panels on the ground if you don't want them on your roof. However, tax breaks or other financial incentives can significantly offset the initial costs of installing solar panels. Some states offer varying rebates, especially when including batteries in the mix. So keep an eye out for those to further reduce costs. One of the most important cost factors in the cost of solar panels is the number of panels you need for your home. Did you know the number of panels is dictated by how much power you use and the site conditions of your home? Not installing enough solar panels can cause real buyer's remorse when you must continue to pay the utility after installing solar. So let's get into that. First, the more electricity your home uses, the more panels you'll likely need to generate enough power, which in turn means the cost of the system will typically be greater. Second, Consider how you're using power now. Are you frugal and careful with AC usage or about leaving lights on? Or do you prefer a comfortable house that's well lit? The historical electric usage of the latter example will tend to be more accurate since there isn't a ceiling on electricity use, so it tends to reflect on the bill. Third, location matters. While the US gets good sunlight year round, seasonal variations affect how much electricity your panels generate. And keep in mind your roof's usable area. That directly impacts how many panels you can install. A roof facing south and with clear skies will need fewer panels than a roof facing northeast and susceptible to shade. The latter roof is less efficient, so you have to bridge the gap by adding more panels, thereby increasing the cost. Last but not least, consider your energy goals. Do you want to completely ditch the utility or just offset some of your electricity use? This impacts the amount of power needed, and depending on your utility, we often suggest you over-design the system to produce more than 100% of usage. Here's why. Human beings will typically use more of any resource as supply increases or costs decrease. If you only design to 100%, chances are your usage will increase, and you may end up with a growing utility bill after solar and regret. While the number of panels is essential, understanding the cost breakdown of solar in the US is even more important. Sunshine is free, but installing solar is not. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise. The cost of solar, no matter how good of a deal you may get, will always seem expensive compared to the utility because the utility is in bite size amounts every month. In contrast, solar may be a lump cash payment or an equivalent loan so just by that comparison, solar will seem expensive to most people. Plus there's potential additional costs, like I mentioned earlier. But why is solar more affordable in a country like Australia? Well, our wonderful subscriber, Steven, may have additional input. I hope he chimes in. I can name a few reasons. First, there are soft costs, including permitting and customer acquisition. In America, you need a permit to stand in line to get a permit. Whereas it seems that Australian protocols require way less red tape to install solar panels. And that drives down cost. Second, 
Based on my research, I got the impression that labor costs may be lower in Australia compared to the United States. Lower labor costs translate into a lower price seen by the end customer. And when you couple that with lower soft costs, you get a lower price overall. But I think the biggest factor is the maturity level of Australia's solar market. This, I assume, has led to a greater degree of market penetration and industry efficiencies. While there are sometimes additional costs associated with installing solar panels, in many cases, the financial viability of solar panels still works. But sometimes, there are better alternatives to reduce electricity costs. Here's the thing, the less electricity you use, the less you pay. Wow, didn't know that. Hey. <laughs> Whether from the sun or from the grid. So what can you do before going solar? Well, for one, turn off unnecessary lights. While that's small potatoes, it all adds up. Then look for the highest wattage lights in your home and try to replace them with more efficient bulbs. If you have a pool and don't have a variable speed pool pump, buy one. This is a big deal since variable speed pool pumps can pay for themselves within a year by reducing usage between 30 to 40%. But you know what uses the most power in a home? Heating and cooling. If you heat with electricity, Oof, that's the least efficient method way to stay warm. Throw on a sweater, use an electric blanket, or even a space heater instead of a whole house heater, and you'll notice huge savings. If your water heater is electric, and even if it's not, throw on a water heater blanket to keep as much heat inside. And as for air conditioning, if you live in an area where you can use a whole house fan, they're much more efficient than an AC unit and will even cool your house faster than AC at a lower price. And no matter how you heat or cool, if your home has poor insulation, air leaks, or other similar deficiencies, you will spend more money running your heating and cooling gadgets. Making changes to improve your home's efficiency by reducing usage may save you the most money on solar panels by not buying them, or at the very least, needing a smaller solar panel system, which will save you thousands of dollars. And did you know that companies that sell solar panels, like Drone Quote, are incentivized to higher degree the more panels you buy? We make more money if you buy more solar panels. So what does that mean for you? It means a lot of solar companies are okay with keeping their mouth shut about things that you should do to reduce usage before installing solar panels. Of course, you should get the most competitive price on your solar but you should also work with a company like DroneQuote that has a great reputation for serving the customer's best interests first and above all else, even if it means we suggest you don't buy solar panels. You have to watch this video about increasing your home's efficiency across the board if you're considering solar panels because even one less solar panel can save you over $1,000. Unless you prefer your money living in somebody else's wallet, that is.